Thanks here. Thank you, Gabe. And thanks to the Daily Reporter and the Clay County Fair for sponsoring this debate. And I also want to thank Bill here for coming in, not for, for coming, I'm coming into his neighborhood, but for agreeing to this debate. And uh, debates are a great opportunity for voters to see candidates firsthand and hear them and uh, see what their vision and, and leadership style are here. So I think this is great. And uh, frankly, we talked earlier, and I would like to see if we could have five debates around the, the, the state here, one in each congressional district. And I think Bill sounded positive, so that'd be great. Normally in a debate like this, I would begin by laying out my uh, my vision for Iowa agriculture and food production. However, today, Iowa is under a national microscope. The agricole and the national salmonella food poisoning from Iowa lakes have damaged Iowa's reputation. The Iowa Secretary of Agriculture should, above all, be a spokesperson for Iowa's agriculture and food system and should be taking action to assure Iowans and the nation that this problem is being addressed. However, I don't see that happening. It's not enough for the Secretary of Agriculture to say that this is a federal problem and he's going to wait for the FDA report to see what the problem is. That does nothing to restore confidence in the integrity and reputation of Iowa's food and agriculture system. Preliminary indications are that the salmonella contamination came from a commercial feed mill owned by Jaffe Coster, which delivered feed to two Iowa England facilities. We know that the Iowa Code Chapter 198 says that the Secretary of Agriculture has the authority and responsibility to inspect and ensure the integrity of feed mills that produce commercial feed. But the Secretary denies his authority to inspect the decoster feed mill, even though the law explicitly states that feed mills that sell feed or that distribute feed to contract feeders should be licensed and inspected. Mr. North, Mr. North contends that decoster has a loophole exemption. What he does not tell us is that the law also gives the Secretary the authority to adopt rules to carry out the purpose and intent of Chapter 198. In other words, it has the authority to close loopholes in the law through rule rulemaking. As Secretary of Agriculture, I would fulfill my responsibility to inspect commercial feed mills, but also would lay out a regulatory framework to ensure food safety in the egg industry. After reviewing the new USD, uh, FDA egg rule and consulting with scientists working in this arena, I propose that the Iowa legislature should adopt the model used by the state of Maine, which has been in place for 22 years and has been effective in protecting Maine's egg, egg production from salmonella. The state of Maine's egg safety program complements the new FDA egg rule and, store, and shores up the weakness of that federal rule. Specifically, the Maine program has three features that go beyond the requirements of the new FDA egg rule. Number one, an effective program for vaccinating uh, laying hens. Number two, monthly inspection of laying facilities for sanitation and testing of salmonella within the building. And three, testing uh, eggs when salmonella is found in the building. So these measures have worked well to protect the safety of Maine's egg industry and would work well here in Iowa as well. As the number one producer of eggs, Iowa should be also the number one in food safety. So this is really the BP moment for egg, egg uh, production. And we need to use that to wake up and to ensure the safety of Iowa eggs in the future. Thank you. to home and, and the Clay County Fair, a fair that uh, I love being at. It, I almost consider it as much home as, as my Dickinson County Fairs. I showed, showed calves here through the years and spent a lot of time here. So I appreciate all of you being here. It's a beautiful day at the fair. You could be outside as well. Again, thanks to the uh, reporter, to the questioners, uh, all that made this event happen. And thank you as well for the honor and privilege of being your Secretary of Agriculture uh, the last four years. Uh, there are so many things that happen at the Department of Agriculture, and we've been blessed to be able to uh, work on many of those things. Four years ago, as we talked about what we wanted to do, we wanted to uh, take advantage of the opportunities of renewable fuels. And, and those opportunities we've seen over the last 10 years, how they've grown. And in fact, 10 years ago, we had uh, about 1.9 billion gallons of ethanol production. Now we have 12 billion gallons nationally of ethanol production. And, and I was about a fourth of that production. It's a huge economic boom uh, to agriculture, to Iowa. Uh, it's been a big part of the economics of the state of Iowa. And it's also allowed the opportunity to see us grow in livestock production, grow in cattle feeding and dairy production again as well, because of distiller's grain that comes from those ethanol plants. And, and secondly, to, to look at it, making sure that we're doing what we should be doing on soil conservation and taking care, care of our natural resources. We have a great state great soil and we need to take care of those natural resources. Uh, I think we're doing a good job and we've got a lot of things going. We certainly have a lot of things going on the nutrient management side. A lot of effort. The producers are doing a great job. We've got more that we can do. Uh, 
Um, we certainly need to do more, but that's been a priority of ours as well. And then thirdly is telling the story by way of agriculture. So many folks forget what agriculture is in this state and take it for granted. We need to talk about all that it brings. It's a quarter of the state's economy. Um, it, 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 that land that we protect out there, the water that we protect um, on our farms, that an economic engine that agriculture is, is so important and yet we can take it for granted. So our effort has been to get to all 99 counties, to talk to many groups inside and outside of agriculture, to talk to those outside of the state of Iowa as well, to tell that story, that great story of Iowa agriculture. I think we've had our, we certainly had some challenges as well. We had some budget cuts in the Department of Agriculture. We, we are about 20% less people than what we had two years ago. Uh, our budget was cut from 2008 to 2010 by 23%, significant cuts. We managed those cuts, keeping the priorities on conservation and food safety and, and the other programs that people expect at the same time, stretching our dollars as absolutely far as we can. And we're going to have probably some additional budget challenges as we go forward. Uh, we had other challenges. We had the price rises that happened in 2008 and, and the challenges of food versus fuel and the concerns about are we going to have enough grain to go around um, and, and, and the impact that that was as well, even on the Grain Indemnity Fund and other structures that we have out here and manage through those pieces. I think one of the things we do know for sure is there are things that come up that are unpredictable. Some things we can't absolutely predict. And other things are, are things that we know that, that the person that's a secretary needs to be able to understand and be able to be prepared and be able to handle those. I think as we look forward, we have a great opportunity to, make, to, to create jobs on and off the farm from our agriculture. We, do, we have special land. We have mostly good weather. Uh, we certainly have great producers and great infrastructure out here, and the opportunities to grow agriculture, grow the economic power of agriculture as well, um, is phenomenal. But we need to take advantage of that. We need to encourage that. I'm just in Cedar Rapids, actually, yesterday, our processing plant that processes corn into ethanol, into high fructose corn syrup, <clears throat> hundreds, even thousands of jobs in Cedar Rapids, non-farm jobs, are dependent on agriculture. And it's something that we can do a better job of promoting those agricultural jobs uh, as well in our cities, uh, as well as our small towns. Uh, and so I think we have a lot of opportunities to be able to grow. It's certainly my desire to, uh, to be your Secretary of Agriculture in the next four years and make those things happen.